The next speaker, we go from Turkey to Spain, is Rita Udina. She wants to saw it rather than to paste it. Rita, please. Do you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, we can hear you, but we cannot see you. Now, now, yeah. Yes. We can see you now, we can hear you. Please start your presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Rita Udina, paper and book conservator from Spain. So 15 minutes doesn't give, uh, well, thank you first. Uh, in these 15 minutes, there's no time for much. So the title of my presentation is at the same time, uh, introduction, and conclusion. I will share the PowerPoint. A ver, share. Good. So, sew it rather than paste it. That's it. Mm. If you still want to stay for 10 more minutes, you shall be aware that uh, I will only highlight uh, the main concepts of the full paper. Good, so books. There are plenty of materials and decoration that might differ, but the essential remains. A binding a structure that collects as well as enables to flip the folios. There is a large variety of structures, but keeping in mind this essentiality simplifies conservation a lot. It's all about pasting and sewing. And according to my experience, parts that require movement endure more when they are sewn, whereas those static ones are stronger when they are pasted. This is a detail of a book cover and a really flexible sewing gathers the covers with a text block, allowing movement. And the paste down, the end leaf, which is static on the cover, remains adhered to it with some paste. I will discuss today three general cases of book binding. Proportion of the books is not a matter of how big they are. It's a matter of the capacity of its structure to enable handling, protect the content, and be functional. So this is a disproportionate uh, structure because the spine of the text block is twice as wide as the wrapper, as, as the parchment wrapper as the, the, the outer style. And yes, it remains uh, attached, but one third of the text of the folios remain unprotected. And if we intend to uncurl the text block, then it shall never fit in. So it's uh, an enduring but failing structure. And most common, but uh, not so obvious, is the case of really heavy books. Sorry. <laughs> of really heavy books. And we cannot hold, these books cannot hold themselves vertically on the shelf without suffering damage. In this particular case, the cords are a recessed cord sewing and they have been already weakened in the binding process where the slips were frayed in order to prevent bulk on the paste down and the inner job. And that's why they break. Disproportioned bindings can also be really small. For instance, this is after conservation. I mean, it's disproportionate as long as the attachment, boards, and text block is too weak. So before conservation, the text block was falling, falling towards the shelf because it was too heavy. 
And that's a really interesting case of an original adhered reinforcement. So this was done in the binding process. It consists on a thickest fabric, loads of glue, and the most reliable sewing on tapes. And still, all these three things were not succeeding to keep the text block attached to the covers. Was it because the text block is too heavy? Or maybe because too much movement should have discouraged adhesion? It would have been as easy as just doing some random stitches on a soon reinforcement in the spine, going through a mouth, for instance, or a remake, and the gatherings of the text block. And then we can insert the mull or the remake into the covers. And this guarantees a really flexible, strong, and enduring bond, no matter how heavy the book is. And once the structure is properly reinforced, the rest is really easy. Second study case, bindings without sewing. It's the most common case of albums. In albums, the content is inserted after binding the book, which needs to be flexible enough for this intensive handling to accommodate the photos. So the structure consists of folios adhered to each other. But addition fails in this flexibility requirement, and that's why most of the times the folios and the covers are completely detached. So if instead of pasting, uh, we make a soon attachment, it is much more efficient, much more light and invisible. So here you see the mull again and uh, a sewing on the mull. Good. And uh, I will go now to the third uh, general case, because many of you might be wondering, OK, Rita, but what do you do when there's no chance to, to make soon reinforcements? So what I do is what I have learned by observing all bindings. Many of them have uh, have used the green direction as a provider of uh, structure in, the, in, in these adhered parts. For instance, this is the, an end lip of a book, and you can see that it has the opposite green direction, and this is uh, not that uh, rare. So I wondered, uh, why would the book binder have uh, went to so much struggles to get such a poor result because we know that uh, the opposite grain direction involves plenty of wrinkles all over. And I thought, is it that they don't know what they are doing? I don't think so. Maybe it's a really clever way to prevent tears along the joint because the tear goes in horizontal. If we use the regular vertical grain, grain direction, tears are favored along the joint, and then we have a detachment of the end paper. So this um, providing structure to adhere attachment is what I do uh, in soon unsupported bound books. There's really not much uh, time to go in further detail for these bindings, uh, which is a bit complex, but you have the, the video on this link below and, and you can watch it. 
So in these types of binding, I uh, take advantage of, uh, I combine three different things. The reinforcement with the sewing, whenever it's possible. Uh, the grain direction as a provider of structure in mobile attachments. And uh, a third one, which is detaching the, the spine from the text flow. Because, um, and then it, it, I convert uh, a tight spine to a, a hollow spine. And I do this in order to make the outer spine less vulnerable and the whole structure more, much more flexible. So combining, combining uh, these three aspects, we have a light, invisible, and really flexible uh, structure. And here's uh, the link to a, a paper I wrote explaining all these things, uh, which is in Spanish, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm Catalan. <laughs> so, in conclusion, unions that require movement endure more when they are soon. And we take advantage of grain direction as a provider of structure and flexible areas should remain light. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Rita. Um, thank you also for the very uh, instructive uh, depictions and slides and a, a very, um, how should I say, a topic which is very important and uh, holds many unsolved uh, aspects. And I think there are also questions to you later, so I also invite you to stay until the end of the section, please at least stay until the end of the section, of course. You can stay for the whole conference and you are very welcome. <laughs>